Welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at PCAP file management in Netford Land Guardian. My name is Dara Delaney from Netford. I've now logged on to my Land Guardian. So let's check out the PCAP file management features. So to do that, we click on the gear symbol, go to PCAPs, and I have two options here. Let me just delete this other PCAP I was working on earlier. Okay, so I have two options. I can go for a capture or I can upload a PCAP file. Firstly, let's take a look at capture. When I select it, we have a few options. We can select a network interface. I've got two connectors. One is I use for the management of my LangGuardian. The other I use for a connection back to my span port or mirror port on my core. So this will be the richest source of data because it's getting stuff right at the core of the network. And if I had remote sensors in other locations, I could select them here. So I can select that. Now some of you say, well, why can't you use Wireshark for PCAPs? And Wireshark's a fantastic tool, excellent if you're troubleshooting like on your laptop, connect, collecting local traffic. But the advantage of using LandGuardian is the fact that it's connected to the spam port 24-7. So you don't need to be recabling and messing around with spam or mirror ports. You just come to the interface and say what, you, well, you put in your filter, capture what you need. So just on filters, I could do something like, um, and it's the same sort of filter you could use in Wireshark. You can do like host 10.1.1.97 and port 445, let's say. So that would capture file share traffic associated with this particular host here. I'm not gonna use any filter. I'm just gonna give it a file name here. We'll call it, um, just call it traffic capture. And uh, number of packets, just for sample, we just go for, well, let's go for a few more. Let's go for 200 packets and select capture. So the system now goes off and goes to try and capture some traffic. Let's just speed it up. I'm on the Wireshark page here. Just refresh that. So there we go. We should be right up to um, 200 packets. There we go. So I've now got a PCAP file. Once I have it captured, I can, firstly, I can download the file, but let's view the contents first. And in here, I can see that I have machines connecting to um, other systems on the network over 443. That's probably connection to that Wireshark website. There's a stuff here at channel at google.com. So there's traffic in this PCAP file. I can then download this file. So we we'll just call it traffic capture and I can then open that in Wireshark and check it out. And sometimes I might might want to use Wireshark to check timings or maybe I'll check a firewalls and see what response I'm getting back. So many reasons why I would use Wireshark. Um, there's DNS traffic in here, there's, there's all sorts of different protocols. And I can go through each packet, take a look at the payloads. Most of the payloads are encrypted, although there's one there that's not. Um, scroll down. Most of the stuff is just binary data, all encrypted. Something there that's not, what's that? That's a TCP connection, something to do with Google. So lots of packets and that in some cases is very useful. Another option you have with LangGuardian is, let's delete that now, is to take a packet capture from another source, whether it's Wireshark, your firewall, or wherever you happen upon that PCAP file and upload it. So I'm gonna select a file and I have one here called users. So let's select that PCAP file. And then I click on the option here to process that file. Now, depending on the file size, it may take a couple of minutes. What happens is, is that the traffic within PCAP file, it's sent to both an intrusion detection engine and also sent to a traffic analysis engine. So once the file is processed, we can go to any reports here. So for example, the applications in use. Make sure you choose the PCAP sensor when you're in a report and run that. So within that file, most of the traffic was file share traffic. So I can then drill down on that and see what was going on. So in fact, somebody accessed some budget forecast file. So within that PCAP, that information was somewhere in there amongst, I think there's over a thousand packets of data. The file was open for a read actually. And let's see, is there anything else 
in here so you could see it was actually used in SMB version 2 not version 1 which is good um, this is the client that access the file and you have the date and time so that's one approach when it comes to um, PCAPs you can import them in here see what type of applications are running drill down I could also take a look at let's just check I don't think um, well, I wouldn't expect to pick up any viruses or anything on the network for that particular time period let's just run a check anyways yeah so my network events report which would be the output for the intrusion detection engine it doesn't really it doesn't see anything here which that doesn't come as any um, surprise it's only a very short packet capture and you can use other reports where do you want to use um, Ethernet reports, some of your interview reports or whatever. But tip, any time you want to use a PCAP, go for applications that use. It's a nice starting point and um, shows you, you know, what is in that PCAP. And from there you might decide to drill down or use a different set of reports. So when you're all done with your PCAPs, if we go back here to the PCAP management page, uh, I can see this one here was uploaded rather than being captured locally and I, from here then I can actually delete that just to keep things tidy and that's my uh, everything gone here now from my PCAP management page. So that's the, uh, you know, it's a nice cool feature if you want a snapshot of traffic whether it's associated with a host or a port number or whatever. It's just one place to go if you have sensors all around the network and if you get packet captures from other locations, you can import them in.